17 Republic vs Manalo. GR number 221029. April 24, 2018. Facts. Respondent Marilyn Tainadu Manalo filed a petition for cancellation of entry of marriage in the Civil Registry of San Juan, Metro Manila. By virtue of a judgment of divorce rendered by a Japanese court. Petitioner is previously married in the Philippines to a Japanese national named Yoshino Minoro. Recently, a case for divorce was filed by herein petitioner in Japan and after due proceedings, a divorce decree dated December 6, 2011 was rendered by the Japanese court. The trial court denied the petition for lack of merit. In ruling that the divorce obtained by Manalo in Japan should not be recognized, it opined that, based on Article 15 of the new civil code, the Philippine law does not afford Filipinos the right to file for a divorce, whether they are in the country or living abroad, if they are married to Filipinos or to foreigners. Or if they celebrated their marriage in the Philippines or in another country and that unless Filipinos are naturalized as citizens of another country. Philippine laws shall have control over issues related to Filipinos' family rights and duties. Together with the determination of their condition and legal capacity to enter into contracts and civil relations, including marriages. On appeal, the CA overturned the RDC decision. It held that Article 26 of the Family Code of the Philippines is applicable even if it was Manalo who filed for divorce against her Japanese husband because the decree they obtained makes the latter no longer married to the former, capacitating him to remarry. Conformably with Navarro, ETL vs. Executive Secretary Ermita. ETL ruling that the meaning of the law should be based on the intent of the lawmakers and in view of the legislative intent behind Article 26. It would be the height of injustice to consider Manalo as still married to the Japanese national, who, in turn, is no longer married to her. For the appellate court, the fact that it was Manalo who filed the divorce case is inconsequential. Issues Whether, under the same provision a Filipino citizen has the capacity to remarry under Philippine law after initiating a divorce proceeding abroad and obtaining a favorable judgment against his or her alien spouse who is capacitated to remarry. Ruling We deny the petition and partially affirm the CA decision. Paragraph 2 of Article 26 confers jurisdiction on Philippine courts to extend the effect of a foreign divorce decree to a Filipino spouse without undergoing trial to determine the validity of the dissolution of the marriage. It authorizes our courts to adopt the effects of a foreign divorce decree precisely because the Philippines does not allow divorce. Philippine courts cannot try the case on the merits because it is tantamount to trying a divorce case 22 under the principles of comedy. Our jurisdiction recognizes a valid divorce obtained by a spouse of foreign nationality, but the legal effects thereof, e.g., on custody, care and support of the children or property relations of the spouses, must still be determined by our courts. According to Judge Alicia Sempio DIY, a member of the committee, the idea of the amendment is to avoid the absurd situation of a Filipino as still being married to his or her alien spouse. Although the latter is no longer married to the former because he or she had obtained a divorce abroad that is recognized by his or her national law. The aim was that it would solve the problem of many Filipino women who, under the new civil code, are still considered married to their alien husbands even after the latter have already validly divorced them under their, the husband's, national laws and perhaps have already married again. We rule in the affirmative. Both Dacuson v. Dacuson and Van Dorn already recognized a foreign divorce decree that was initiated and obtained by the Filipino spouse and extended its legal effects on the issues of child custody and property relation, respectively. When this court recognized a foreign divorce decree that was initiated and obtained by the Filipino spouse and extended its legal effects on the issues of child custody and property relation, it should not stop short in likewise acknowledging that one of the usual and necessary consequences of absolute divorce is the right to remarry. Indeed, 
there is no longer a mutual obligation to live together and observe fidelity. When the marriage tie is severed and ceased to exist, the civil status and the domestic relation of the former spouses change as both of them are freed from the marital bond. Paragraph 2 of Article 26 speaks of a divorce validly obtained abroad by the alien spouse capacitating him or her to remarry. Based on a clear and plain reading of the provision, it only requires that there be a divorce validly obtained abroad. The letter of the law does not demand that the alien spouse should be the one who initiated the proceeding wherein the divorce decree was granted. It does not distinguish whether the Filipino spouse is the petitioner or the respondent in the foreign divorce proceeding. The court is bound by the words of the statute, neither can we put words in the mouths of the lawmakers. Assuming, for the sake of argument, that the word obtained should be interpreted to mean that the divorce proceeding must be actually initiated by the alien spouse, still. The court will not follow the letter of the statute when to do so would depart from the true intent of the legislature or would otherwise yield conclusions inconsistent with the general purpose of the act. Laws have ends to achieve, and statutes should be so construed as not to defeat but to carry out such ends and purposes. To reiterate, the purpose of paragraph 2 of Article 26 is to avoid the absurd situation where the Filipino spouse remains married to the alien spouse who, after a foreign divorce decree that is effective in the country where it was rendered, is no longer married to the Filipino spouse. The provision is a corrective measure to address an anomaly where the Filipino spouse is tied to the marriage while the foreign spouse is free to marry under the laws of his or her country. Whether the Filipino spouse initiated the foreign divorce proceeding or not. A favorable decree dissolving the marriage bond and capacitating his or her alien spouse to remarry will have the same result the Filipino spouse will effectively be without a husband or wife. A Filipino who initiated a foreign divorce proceeding is in the same place and in like circumstance as a Filipino who is at the receiving end of an alien-initiated proceeding. Therefore, the subject provision should not make a distinction. In both instances, it is extended as a means to recognize the residual effect of the foreign divorce decree on Filipinos whose marital ties to their alien spouses are severed by operation of the latter's national law. A Filipino who is married to another Filipino is not similarly situated with a Filipino who is married to a foreign citizen. There are real, material, and substantial differences between them. Ergo, they should not be treated alike both as to rights conferred and liabilities imposed. Without a doubt, there are political, economic, cultural, and religious dissimilarities as well as varying legal systems and procedures, all too unfamiliar. That a Filipino national who is married to an alien spouse has to contend with. More importantly, while a divorce decree obtained abroad by a Filipino against another Filipino is null and void. A divorce decree obtained by an alien against his or her Filipino spouse is recognized if made in accordance with the national law of the foreigner. On the contrary, there is no real and substantial difference between a Filipino who initiated a foreign divorce proceedings and a Filipino who obtained a divorce decree upon the instance of his or her alien spouse. In the eyes of the Philippine and foreign laws, both are considered as Filipinos who have the same rights and obligations in an alien land. The circumstances surrounding them are alike. Were it not for paragraph 2 of Article 26, both are still married to their foreigner spouses who are no longer their wives' husbands. Hence, to make a distinction between them based merely on the superficial difference of whether they initiated the divorce proceedings or not is utterly unfair. Indeed, the treatment gives undue favor to one and unjustly discriminate against the other. A good number of the Filipinos led by the Roman Catholic Church react adversely to any attempt to enact a law on absolute divorce, viewing it as contrary to our customs, morals, and traditions that has looked upon marriage and family as an institution and their nature of permanence, inviolability, and solidarity. However, none of our laws should be based on any religious law, doctrine, or teaching, otherwise, the separation of church and state will be violated. The Roman Catholic Church can neither impose its beliefs and convictions on the state and the rest of the citizenry nor can it demand that the nation